Dutch. I didn't know that that was an expression. Hello friends and welcome to another Once Upon a Book Club Box unboxing. Today I've got their April box for you guys. I finished the book yesterday night and I'm ready to share my thoughts on the book and show you the gifts that came inside this box. Also their May box is on its way. It's been on its way for two weeks now so fingers crossed it arrives in the next few days but of course as soon as that box arrives I'm gonna read the book so I can give you guys the May unboxing soon as well. And for those of you that have no clue what Once Upon a Book Club box is I will leave their website in the description down below and if you are interested you can use my discount code LeandaBooks10 to get 10% off your first purchase. I was hungry so I grabbed a handful of almonds to eat but now I'm just really self-conscious that little pieces of almonds are stuck between my teeth. So probably not a good idea eating while you're filming. I did that once actually. There was like a piece of spinach stuck in between my teeth but I didn't see it until I was editing the video. So yeah, definitely not a good idea to be eating something right now. <laughs> and if you like these kind of videos, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you never miss another video of me again. Let's get unboxing. I always forget to mention this, but there is a young adult box and an adult box and I have the adult Once Upon a Book Club box. Normally their boxes are actually quite pretty, but this month there were some problems and they went with a normal white box. So let's take our first look. And this is what you see. But of course, as always, we're gonna start with the book, discuss the book, and then we're gonna open the gifts. The book that came in the April box is The Herd by Andrea Barge. I never read something of this author and I had never heard of this book, but when you look at the cover, you can instantly tell that this is gonna be a thriller. Let's read the description. The name of the elite women-only co-working space stretches across the wall behind a check-in desk. The Herd. The ATR in purple. In the know, New Yorkers crawl over one another to apply for membership to this community that prides itself on mentorship and empowerment. Among the hopefuls is Katie Bradley, who's just returned from the Midwest after a stint of book research blew up in her face. Luckily, Katie has an in. Thanks to her sister Hannah, an original herder and the best friend of Eleanor Walls, the herd's charismatic founder. Eleanor is a queen within the herd's sun-filled rooms, admired and quietly feared even as she strives to be warm and approachable. As head of PR, Hannah is working around the clock to prepare for a huge announcement from Eleanor, one that will change the trajectory of the herd forever. Then, on the night of the glitzy herd news conference, Eleanor vanishes. When the police suggest foul play, everyone is a suspect. Eleanor's husband, other herders, the men's rights group that loathe the herd, even Eleanor's closest friends. As Hannah struggles to figure out what her friends was hiding and Katie chases the story of her life, the sisters must face the secrets they've been keeping from each other and confront just how dangerous it can be when women's perfect veneers start to crack. When I first read the description, I wasn't really into the book, so I wasn't like, oh yes, I wanna read it, it sounds so interesting. It just sounded like your regular thriller, your regular whodunit. But when I started it, I actually was really intrigued because the location where it all takes place, or mostly takes place, is The Herd, and that is a female-only co-working space. So the emphasis is really on the empowerment of women and also of minorities. To give you an example, our main characters are called Katie and Hannah and they are sisters, but one of them is adopted and has a brown skin color. And she mentions a couple of times how hard it is for her to be a woman and a woman of color because that means she has a different approach and has to work harder in some cases because she has a different skin color than the majority of the people in that place. And I thought that was just really awesome because it's not at all the main subject of the book and it's not at all what the story is about but it just gives a little bit of emphasis on how hard it is to accomplish something as a woman and as a woman of color. But as I said, that is not what the story is about. It is about Eleanor Wells who is the founder of the herd and she has gone missing. We as readers know from the start that she has been murdered 
They also find out the police says there's foul play and everyone is a suspect. We follow two POVs in the story, Katie and Hannah, as I explained, they are sisters and they both are trying to find out who killed Eleanor. The relationship between Katie and Hannah hasn't been that great and through this ordeal they have to come together. And of course at the end you find out who done it. So what do I think of this book? I enjoyed myself reading the book, it was quite thrilling, however I wasn't on the edge of my seat and I had a hunch from the beginning uh who the killer was and it ended up to be that same person so it was a bit predictable but she did surprise me in some ways i also really like the empowerment part of this book so for instance this quote feeling like you don't know what the f you're doing shouldn't trigger shame it means you're challenging yourself stretching learning and growing and that's something to be proud of what I didn't like is that the two main characters felt really similar. I constantly had to check who I was reading about, so either Katie or Hannah, but still I had to check. Their personality traits are very much alike and that's understandable because they are sisters, but it just felt like the same person at some times, apart from the situations that they were in. And because it is so female focused, I can imagine that not everyone is gonna like this book, but still it is a good thriller and I ended up giving it three and a half stars. Oh, and what I thought was pretty funny because I actually never heard someone say this before. There's a situation where somebody is a bit confused about what's going to happen and then it says Hannah stared like she'd spoken in Dutch. I'm Dutch. I didn't know that that was an expression. Is my language so confusing? <laughs> Enough talking about the book, let's get to the gifts. In the book you can find these post-its that correspond to gifts in your box. So the first gift can be found on page 97. I flicked the envelope open. Inside was a post-it stuck to a scrap of computer paper torn from a corner. Both papers had strings of numbers written on them. 527-4343-40100 on the purple post-it and 89145-12191 on the scrap. They were in the same handwriting. Block numbers, not Eleanor's. That felt kind of weird to read so many numbers, <laughs> but the corresponding gift comes in this envelope and when you open it, when I first saw this gift, I was so sure that this was gonna be some kind of clue that we could solve who did it with these scraps of paper because I just didn't understand why they would like put these pieces of paper in an envelope but as it turns out they were not that significant so I honestly don't really get why they made a paper replica of this um, so I wasn't really impressed with this gift. The next post it can be found on page 120. In the ensuite bathroom I poked at the makeup bag yawning open on a shelf. Lots of clean products. She practiced what she preached. Several products from the Nimbus collection designed to flatter all skin tones and types. The Nimbus launch had bothered me for several reasons. First, that we needed a POC add-on to begin with. It was lame that Gleam's initial products, in particular its highlighter and eyeshadows, didn't work especially well on darker skin. Second, that journalists expected me to join Eleanor for interviews and photos about the line as if my face gave the effort authenticity. One reporter, a bearded dude from Fortune, even asked about my ethnic heritage. It's especially fun to speak on behalf of all women of color when you're barely in touch with your own brownness. The corresponding gift comes in this cute pink package and when you open this, you see that there's a makeup bag inside with the word Go Power on there. It has a zipper and we have another package with all these makeup brushes. Let me give you guys a close up because these look awesome. So we got a total of seven makeup brushes and they remind me of a unicorn. <laughs> and they are really colorful and they appear to be good quality. I'm not really sure though because I am not a makeup expert in any way. <laughs> but I think it's a really nice gift and I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this because I normally go for the bigger brushes and I don't really have small ones, so I'm really happy with this gift. The next post-it is on page 215, and this is a part where we already know that Eleanor has been murdered. Uh, this is the storyline of Hannah, and she is visiting her friend's house, her old house where she grew up. I crept back into my room and looked around. 
taking in the details, all things that Eleanor, once a living, breathing, red-blooded girl, had chosen, given places of honor in her bedroom. A Frida Kahlo portrait watched me coolly from above the door. Had Eleanor truly planned to move to Mexico, or was it a harmless fantasy? It felt so campy and far-fetched, as ridiculous as my best friend turning up dead on the roof of her own company headquarters. The teenage girl who picked out this cloud-covered comforter never saw it coming. The corresponding gift is in this package, it is the portrait that is mentioned in the book. I, I don't think I'm gonna put this up somewhere. Uh, I appreciate the thought though, because it does make the story come alive a bit more. Um, but yeah, just not a fan. Let me know what you think of this print. The final post-it can be found on page 283. This is also the part where it's revealed who done it. So if you don't wanna know that, skip this part. And this time we follow Katie. She didn't move, so I turned toward the door. A few steps later, my eye fell on the craft organizer hanging from her closet door. I saw them all clustered in one pocket like a deadly bouquet, shiny and sharp, the same tool I'd often seen in her overstuffed backpack on account of all the careful photo cuttings she was doing. My chest turned to cold steel, and before I knew what I was doing, I reached out and touched the cap of one, the X-Acto knife's blade glistening below it. Oh my god, I said. It was never a scalpel. Behind me, a heavy scraping sound. You don't understand. If you'd been there, you'd understand. Scorching heat on the back of my head, then a plummeting sensation. My legs gave out and the floor rammed my kneecaps. This gift came outside of the box because it is quite big. And I was actually quite surprised with this one. I thought this was a very original gift. This is the gift. The wooden part can be put here and then you have your own organizer that you can hang somewhere in your house or maybe in your closet. It even comes with these strings. I can imagine that this is another thing that you can put it up with and they put this in here to represent the exacto knives that she found in the closet. I am still debating on what I can use this for because the pockets that they made are quite small, especially these one. I can put like barely two fingers in there. If you have an idea, let me know. I do really like the color. They kept it really neutral. So almost anybody that gets this gift can use it. So next to the gifts, we also got a card with a quote from the book. She inspired us, made us feel sparkling and special and proud. And of course, the leaflet with real long dates, discussion dates, and meet the author. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this was not their strongest box in my opinion. We got a total of four gifts and I'm probably only gonna use one of them. Like, I don't mind a paper replica, but these were just post-its with numbers on them. I'm gonna throw that away like right after I finish the book. So that's a shame and the prints I'm not a fan of, but that's probably personal taste. However, I am gonna cut them some slack because these are difficult times and in the past they've come with really strong boxes. However, this was just not my favorite. And as far as a favorite gift goes, I'm gonna go with the makeup bag and the makeup brushes. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on the April box. What did you think of the items? Did you read the book? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and let's stay in touch.